Hey there my fellow Indians welcome to News Hamster so you're all here after watching the thumbnail and the title of the video but it becomes imperative for me as a journalist to tell you about what we are going to talk and what we are going to discuss and also give you the background so recently Tipu Sultan Jayanti has been celebrated in different parts of Karnataka some on massive scale some on not so massive scale according to political conveniences apart from the fact that this was also a major news and a lot of undercurrents uh, Congress MLA Tanvir Seth went on to say that they are going to soon build a statue of Tipu Sultan which will be 100 feet tall and this was not sitting right with the current ruling uh, party and the people of the right wing organizations who went on to say that they are going to demolish the statue as soon as it's constructed. Further a very popular playwright and a writer Karyappa has went on to popularize his book Tipu Nija Kanasugalu meaning the real dreams of Tipu where he is trying to talk about the atrocities and all the wrongs committed by Tipu Sultan. Now this book has been stated by the Karnataka High Court as a plea was filed that this portrays Tipu and the Muslim community in a wrong light. So in this video I am going to talk to you about what are the wrong things that are being portrayed against Tipu Sultan, why you should not possibly hate or show so much animosity towards this ruler and why he was a product of his times of his philosophy. So all this I am going to discuss in this video. So stay tuned with us until this video ends and don't forget to subscribe to News Hamster if you haven't already. So first things first, Tipu Sultan was actually born on December 1st, 1751. Now Tipu Sultan Jayanti has been celebrated on different dates according to political conveniences like I said. But historical records say that he was born on December 1st, 1751. He came to power in 1782 and ruled till 1799. Under him, Mysore became one of the most progressive states and the most progressive regions of that point in time even overtaking Bengal. Former President APJ Abdul Kalam in one of his uh, lectures in the Tipu Sultan Shaheed Memorial Lectures went on to say that Tipu Sultan was the world's first innovator when it comes to rocket and the usage of rockets in warfare. Yes, in India Tipu Sultan was the first ruler who used rockets because rockets were not a common phenomenon in India. They were started by the Chinese. In India, Tipu Sultan used that method. Tipu Sultan also wanted to set up his own navy. He's written about it in his records where he wanted about 20 battleships 20 frigates, 72 plus cannons. Mysore also overtook Bengal as a very progressive state when it comes to economics or when it comes to the growth rate. Uh, when you talk about that, Tipu Sultan set up many manufacturing centers and trade centers in and around Mysore. He also went on to popularize the silk trade. As you all know today, Mysore is one of the most progressive and one of the most popular silk producing centers in India. And going forward, he went on to abolish the Jagirdari system, which was a very problematic system introduced by the Mughals. He put an end to that and he introduced the concept of state capitalism, which was way ahead of its time and people had no idea how it's working. But it is proven that people were very happy with the kind of uh, progressive work that was happening. Divan Purnaya, his records, uh, records written by the English are testimony to the fact that Mysore was extremely progressive under Tipu Sultan. And we all know Tipu also led the foundation of the Kanambadi Dam, which later went on to become the Krishna Raja Sagar Dam, the KRS Dam, which happens to be the lifeline for a lot of people around Bengaluru and Mysore region. Going forward, we have to understand that in the, in the relation between the Tipu and the British Empire was a very tough, was a very uh, rivalry kind of a relationship. When it comes to the Third Anglo-Mysore War, Tipu Sultan obviously lost the war. The Treaty of Patna was signed. At this point in time, Cornwallis was in India. He was the man who led the British Empire in this particular war. He had just come down from the United States of America and he had a lot of animosity and anger inside him because he was the guy who surrendered the United States of America to people like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. He wanted to prove his mettle, so he said it's politics right and the, the British ended up winning the Third Anglo-Mysore War. But what I'm trying to point out here is the terms of the Treaty of Sri Ranga Patna. Now when, when Britishers told Tipu Sultan that you had to pay a war indemnity of 3 crore rupees, which was a massive amount back then, Tipu Sultan obviously said that he did not have so much of money in my royal treasury as of now. So the Britishers said that until you get so much of money, you surrender two of your sons as hostages and when you collect the money, you can take them back. Tipu Sultan readily agreed to this and even his children lived in the British court for a long period of time until their father was able to pay back the amount and get them back. Now my challenge is only one particular thing. When Tipu is, is being told as someone who was, who was very against the people and this and that, I claim that Tipu was a freedom fighter. And when you talk about his fight for freedom, show me one. Show me one prince, one king, one monarch or one freedom fighter who has pledged two of his sons to the British Empire for the nation, 
for the independence and the removal of british from the indian subcontinent i will write and give it to you you will not find anybody in that sense now this might look like i'm a huge fan of tipu sultan but as a matter of fact this is the reality this is the historical fact that nobody tries to tell you yes again i will come to the religion part but when it comes to the fourth anglo mysore war the last anglo mysore war that tipu fought and died we have to understand that at this point in time the britishers were so amused with tipu's relations with the french his father hyder ali had even trained his uh, mysore army on the french army style now at this point in time i would like to highlight tipu sultan's relations with foreign nations he, he had sent emissaries to the french government he had sent emissaries to the afghan government the ottoman empire the persian empire and so many such places because he believed in the same policy that bose at one point in time believed that the enemy of an enemy is a friend so he wanted to befriend the french the, or the ottoman rulers so that they could attack india and they would they would be able to drive the british out of the indian subcontinent now at that point in time during the fourth anglo mysore war during the 1795 onwards the, the regime of napoleon was very strong now napoleon at that point in time had reached egypt he wanted to capture egypt and make it a part of the french empire now at that point in time lord wellesley was in india he had introduced his famous subsidiary alliance policy and he wanted the mysore kingdom to sign the subsidiary alliance policy now you all know what is subsidiary alliance policy where basically that the indian rulers will become puppets in the hands of the british empire the nizams the marathas the nawab of awadh everybody had signed the subsidiary alliance but tipu refused to sign the subsidiary alliance because tipu was sure that he had some bigger plans in mind what were those bigger plans napoleon had received emissaries of tipu sultan the french had received the emissaries of tipu sultan they said that once egypt is under our control the middle east is under our control we will send our troops to india and go ahead and link with tipu sahib now this is not my statement this is coming from the records of a french diplomat telly andri uh, the link has been put in the description you can have a look at it this record is coming from there where they are ready to come down to india if you are aware the french had left india way back in 1764 after the battle of wandiwash against the british empire which ended the third carnatic war now it is the time when napoleon is aiming to come to india and the britishers know that if napoleon comes to india it will be very very tough for them to survive here now we all know that anglo french rivalry has been quite a thing since a very very long time but the problem here is napoleon's siege of egypt was not successful he was not able to come down to india but at this point in time wellesley had written a chart sheet that we need to attack this man unconditionally unequivocally or else it will be a trouble for us because he is forging a conspiracy with the french to attack the british empire now when this was allowed wellesley launched the fourth anglo mysore war now that's again internal political scenario will come into play but what i'm trying to point out is he was the first guy he was one of the in most important indian rulers to develop such strong foreign diplomatic relations he even became a part of the jacobin club and he started the jacobin club of mysore for those and worse jacobin club played a very very crucial role in the french revolution and as we know the most politically influential clubs of the world he even called himself citizen tipu and planted the tree of liberty in sri rang patna ladies and gentlemen when we talk about rulers when you talk about freedom fighters for us gandhi bose nehru bhagat these people come in mind but why do we not acknowledge the princes the rulers like tipu sultan hyder ali siraj ud daula mir jafar uh, nana saheb so many people who played a very crucial role in driving away the british from india aren't they freedom fighters for us aren't their contributions significant for us to you know tell people that we are suffering from a foreign rule and we need to get rid of what was happening here Now let's come to the most crucial part. Professor B. Sheikh Ali, a very popular historian, writes that Tipu Sultan was a devout Muslim and not a bigoted Muslim, and I quite agree with him because he is not a bigoted Muslim. If you call Aurangzeb as a bigoted Muslim, yes, we could agree, but Tipu Sultan was not. I'll give you evidences. He made regular endowments to temples in and around. the mysore kingdom now those temples include the very popular rangnath swami temple at shrirangapatna and shri kanteshwara temple also in mysore around 156 hindu temples have received endowments land grants jewelry money from tipu sultan again this is not coming from my whims and fancies these are all mentioned in the records of mysore finances as recorded by divan purnaya if you are aware divan purnaya the finance minister of tipu sultan was also the finance minister of mysore when the tipu's rule ended and krishna jawadeer 3 or mumadi krishna jawadeer became the ruler of mysore when uh, during a war between the marathas in 1791 a group of maratha horsemen under ragunath rao they raided many temples that included the famous shringeri shankaracharya temple 
they wounded and killed many people including the brahmins plundered the monastery of its valuable possessions and they even destroyed the temple displacing the images of the goddesses there but now who was the man who was responsible for this uh, tipu sultan because they say he was the one who destroyed the temples that's not the fact this is actually there and there have been evidences of the people the uh, the heads of the temple the shringeri temple they in coordination with tipu sultan asking for his help or tipu sultan offering help that he would be able to rebuild the temple and work in their favor many historians also are of the opinion that this was the way tipu sultan was trying to be diplomatic because he was losing on the british side now that does not possibly make sense because tipu knew that he had his way out of the british problem if it was not for the internal politics mir sadik and other people of his uh, you know inside the court the most important one is the kodavas of uh, kurg who actually suffered a lot of uh problems because of tipu sultan this is a proven fact but today as of 22nd century we don't have evidence that says 40000 people were killed there is evidence there are people there are families that are that were displaced but we do not know how bad the massacre was so if you are using the massacre's number to defame the image of the ruler then you are absolutely wrong there many historians on record are saying that the kodavas were extremely close were extremely in good relations with the british this was not something appreciated by tipu sultan as a result he went on to attack them but whatever be it this kind of a massacre was 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 not in favor of tipu sultan apart from the kodava records the records of the british officers now these guys wanted to portray to the world that tipu was a ruler who was a problem who was a trouble who was a hater for all these people and the britishers will become the liberators of this region now uh, in the previous week i had an interview with a very popular uh, social activist and a writer agni shridhar who said if people had f- suffered from mass conversion the very few years tipu died they could have come out of the mass conversion there were no such records that say mass reconversion mass ghar wapsi had happened after tipu sultan died and why is this becoming a issue today why is this becoming a thing that tipu had murdered xyz amount of people which we have no records of but yes we want to hate him simply because of the fact that he is a muslim now these kodava records are original authenticated records but the problem today is let us not look at it from the point of view of a hindu muslim fight using the massacre today to color tipu sultan in in the way you want it is wrong because as you all know tipu sultan was a product of his times and his philosophy where at one point in time he is supporting temples at the other point in time he is involving himself in a massacre so what would you say what would you say about tipu being harsh on muslim rulers also muslim rulers like the nawab of savarnur the nawabs of hyderabad who were his bitter enemies nawab of kadappa and karnool the muslims of uh, malabar region malabar region has a lot of muslim community and the madhavi muslims tipu was not favorable to them so was tipu in general a psychopath or in general a ruler who was trying to expand the boundaries of his kingdom trying to establish all kinds of diplomatic relations possible now you guys think about it you guys take a call on this they have they have so many examples where hindu rulers have been involved in fight, fights with hindus they have led to the killing of each other but those we don't speak about at all now for example rana sang of mewar when he wanted to get rid of ibrahim lodi as the last ruler of the delhi sultanate he was playing a crucial role in supporting daulat khan lodi the cousin of ibrahim lodi to invite babar all the way from afghanistan to remove ibrahim lodi. we have one mudda to pick up and to fight about and to establish our hegemony about and here we have it tipu sultan as one of the most used one of the most played cards in the region of karnataka that his photos will not be there his uh, you know statues will not be there that will not be there this will not be there congress has used it for their opinion to appease the muslims the bjp is using it for their opinion to create a sense of defense that you know we will not allow this kind of things to happen history is not supposed to be looked at in this manner there there have been many rulers who were there they have been products of their time and their philosophy let's let's try to take the positives of that time and try to move on make a better future because in a democracy sticking to the past and trying to bring out gade murde from the past doesn't ever work in our favor especially when there are a lot of youngsters out there who are trying to learn and understand and all of these youngsters out there do not fall for this political propaganda of who was a good ruler who was a bad ruler there's something called as books that you can pick up and read and understand everything if you're educated enough because books are the most reliable source of information that you can possibly get not even the internet so try to rely on these facts other than political opinions and debates and tanvir said sir if you have 
the kind of power in your hands to build uh, you know get support to build a 100 feet statue i would request you to put the same amount of uh, you know ambition same amount of resources same amount of ideas into building a university a research institute or even a medical college that would serve the underprivileged and underserved not we don't we don't need a statue we don't need a war of statues that would lead to bigger communal tensions in the future so this would be a humble request to not politicize the life of a ruler who has contributed so much for the country every ruler has had his pros and cons uh, and every ruler has his shares of controversies in history history is not something that's there to get corrected or even to you know look at and absorb the natural things and the wrong things to say we will correct it in the future now this is not precisely a report it's a my idea of telling you that what we are supposed to do as citizens and not fall for political propaganda thank you so much for watching if you need more videos of this sort where we are trying to uh, you know myth bust or you do demystify some historical wrongs uh, write us in the comment section thanks so much for watching stay tuned to news hamster